So I've been making a game for about two weeks now in Golang, and it's been a really great experience. I plan to release this small little 2D platformer in the fall, just before I go back to college. Now you might be thinking that Golang is a bit of an unconventional approach. Not many games are made with Golang. So why did I choose it? Well, there were a few different reasons, and for that I'm going to give you a little bit of background. So I've been making games for a couple years now, and I've used a wide range of programming languages and technologies. Some of the languages I've worked in are C, C++, C Sharp, Java, Python, and even some Rust. So you can tell by that long list that I'm a person that likes to hop from technology to technology. But with that being said, I think I found a home in Golang. This ex whole experience has been very, very smooth, and I cannot wait to make my next project in it. So what did I use to make a game in Golang? Well, for the framework, I used Raylib. If you're not familiar with Raylib, it is a very popular game framework that was written in C and it has a ton of bindings. I've used it primarily in C++ for making small little demos, but it haven't, none of them have really gotten off the ground. So given that I have a good amount of experience in Raylib, it felt like a great choice for learning Golang. So when I picked up Golang with Raylib, I was really surprised to see just how seamless it was to actually make a game. A lot of the times, you know, Raylib's simple API can be a little bit misleading because the while the API itself is simple, writing a game in C++ has a lot of quirks. The main one being memory management. Now I must give a note to this. I completely understand the point of memory management. I've worked mostly with C++, um, but the problem was that I am making a small game. And what I've found is that when I'm trying to make this very small game that is not going to be pushing the limits of any device that it's on, it's a little bit unnecessary for me to architect a huge system that is properly ma memory managed for absolute efficiency. So for my personal use case, I found that using a garbage collected language was a huge benefit. I was able to whip something up very quickly and have pretty good performance as well. So this really gets into why Golang was a great choice. Golang has the speed of a compiled language. It has benchmarks where it is very similar to the speeds of C and C++, but it also has the simplicity of a garbage collected language. Golang has like 28 keywords, I think, and it's really, really nice and intuitive to work with. Picking up the language took like one day. It has a C style syntax, which means that I didn't really have to do much Googling. The only thing that really got me was the colon equal sign for declaring variables. So let's go ahead and go over the pros of using Golang for this project. The first of which was the simplicity. I was able to learn the language, start a game, and get all the major mechanics down with 10 or so levels within two weeks. In C++, it would have taken me two weeks to get just a very, very basic prototype done. So my speed of development in this language is very, very fast. Additionally, I'm gonna mark the garbage collector as a pro for Golang. And the reason is because the garbage collector is very efficient in Golang. If you're ever thinking about garbage collected languages, you typically think of slower languages like Python. The good thing about Go is that Go is a strongly typed compiled language. So even with its garbage collector, it is very, very fast. And the last pro that I will give is the tooling. Now I gotta be honest, the package manager, at first I didn't really like how they did things because I didn't understand it. I was copying and pasting the GitHub URLs manually into every import statement, and I didn't realize that if you just kinda start typing it, it will find the package in your repository and bring it in automatically. So I was really annoyed with that. But after getting used to it, it is extremely convenient. On top of that, another great thing about the tooling is the LSP is wonderful. The LSP is extremely fast. I have never seen it hang whenever I am writing on a project. It doesn't use that much memory that I know of, and the formatting is pretty solid. There are some things about it that I don't really like, but in general, it gets rid of my unused imports automatically, and it auto formats the fields in my structs to sort of align the data types and the names, which is a great plus. So cons Golang, these can be interpreted as cons or things that I wasn't really used to that I kind of had to sort of learn how to deal with. One of them was the 
um, semantics of Golang, if that's a good term for it. Um, there are some weird things about Golang that I wasn't 100% on board with, and I don't know if I still am not 100% on board with. Um, things like using the case of the first letter of variables, structs, and functions to define their private or public access. This means that all your public member fields in your structs will be capital letter first, and all the private ones will be lowercase letter. This sort of enforces a convention, and I don't mind the convention too much. It's just a little bit awkward, especially someone coming from uh, writing C++ and Python, which both typically use either snake case or camel case. So it was a bit of a weird learning curve. Another issue that I ran into a little bit that isn't actually a fault of the language itself is that the game development ecosystem is very small. Golang is not thought of as a game development language. Golang is a back-end language. It's used in servers. It's not meant for making games. So there's not a lot of community around it. This is both in the documentation side and in just the content side. The reason I chose Raylib in the first place was because I already knew Raylib and the Raylib bindings for Golang are one to one. If such a thing as Raylib didn't exist, I would have had a really hard time getting things to work. So I am very thankful for Raylib to have given all these bindings for all these different languages, but it does kind of suck that there are not a lot of creators. Additionally, whenever I'm like using a technology or like a tool, I like to look up like games made with this tool, or I look up like to look up YouTube videos of people like devlogs of people using the same technologies as me, just to sort of give myself a little bit of security, like there is a bit of community around me. And that's not really a thing here. You can find like a handful of videos of people using the Go bindings for Raylib. So that's a bit of a con. It's a con that I think could go away with time. But as far as actual cons in the language, I would say that there are two primary ones. Enums are not great in the language. Um, to define an enum, you just basically say const and then in parentheses you define your enums and the first one you say equals iota and then an offset. That's weird. I don't like that. Why not just make an enum keyword? Anyways, I'm not a language designer. I don't know about all that stuff. The error handling is just a little bit annoying. Um, basically, if you're not familiar with Golang, you what you do is if if a function can error out, you return a tuple with the a data and an error, and it basically enforces if you have to check if the error is not nil, then you handle the error and maybe return early or something like that. It's a little bit annoying. I don't really like doing if statements for every single error, but it's not the worst thing in the world. I do wish there was something that like what they have in Rust, where you can question mark operator at the end of a statement to early return from a function with the error but that's whatever it's not a detrimental point some issues that i had when developing with the language uh the main one was no inheritance I've come from a background of C++, C Sharp, and Python, where all these languages, except Rust, um, all allow inheritance. And so whenever I came into this language, I was like, okay, let's make a base sprite class, let's make a player class, let's make an enemy class, and they both inherit from sprite. Oh, you can't inherit from sprite? What's going on? So I had to really rethink, how am I going to structure my game? And given that my game is a simple 2D platformer game, I took the procedural approach. I have a player, I have a list of enemies, I have a list of items and that's about it. But I wouldn't say that a lack of inheritance is a flaw in the language. What it actually is, is it's a really exciting opportunity. I've been meaning to write a great ECS for my games, and I think this is just the way to do it. Uh, Golang is a simple enough language that it won't take me 100 years to make my own, but it also actually requires that I use it over just the simple object-oriented game development that I've been using for so long. And so I'm really excited to start a future project where I can make my own ECS with that. But yeah, overall, Golang has been a great experience, and I am really looking forward to finishing this game and having it out soon. As I am a game development YouTube channel, I'm really considering making my own tutorial series on game development in Golang, but I want to sort of poll the audience to see, do y'all also want that? Um, it is a bit more of a niche category, so I want to make sure there's actually a reason to make these. I've been considering two frameworks, the Raylib Go bindings that I've been working with, or the Ebit Engine, which seems to be the standard for Golang game development. I myself want to learn Ebit Engine, so I kind of want to lean towards that one, but if y'all want to have a Raylib Go tutorial series, that would also be great. Anyways, that about concludes this video. I uh, hope you found something useful in here. If you have any questions about this video or anything in 
general. Uh, make sure to join my Discord where there's a ton of game developers and it's a great little community. Join and talk to some other fellow game developers there. And if you would like to help support me, you can support me on Patreon in the description. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. See ya.